Ah, finally. Hi. Oh, sorry, you were talking about the craziness. I was watching you as uh, we were, my daughter and I were trying to get all this organized. You oh. and your um, husband supposed to be watching the kiddos? Husband oh. was okay. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> I tell you. Oh, well. Okay. Life. Coco Melon. There you go, <laughs> Coco Melon. Yeah. But yeah, so that was fun. But anywho, we made it. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, I appreciate it. So today we're talking about boobies. Yes, we are. Um, All the other people call them their girls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I've got Poncho and Lefty, so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. So I, uh, this series is something where, you know, we've got, yes, we, we reach out to mostly um, parents, but, um, this is a topic that we will be doing a, a feature specifically on pregnant women um, and the benefits of thermography for them. But just generally, I think it's important to kind of tell everyone what is thermography um, so that they are informed in general. And, and then we can go ahead and in another session, break it down into the benefits for pregnant women. I think that would be great. That All right. Great. Hear me okay? Because I have um, lots of nature. Yeah. The nature is great. There's a bit of a feedback because it's a bit slower because of you're having way more fun. I'm in SoCal and you're in Hawaii. Well, I don't know about that. I am relaxing more. But today, a, a busy day. Let me put these in. That works better. There you go. Is that any better for you? Actually, you're louder. Yes. Okay. All right. So Good. there we go. I have to figure out technology everywhere we go. But. <laughs> All right, so let's kick it off with the with the the overarching question of what is thermography. Okay, the infrared thermography is actually uh, basically the best way of following breast health. And right now, of course, we're focused on women, but I'm letting you know it's men breast health too because men get breast cancer also. And there are a lot of different things when it comes to breast health, but of course, the most important is is cancer itself. And what will happen is, is medicine has their way of diagnosing breast cancer, and they're what we call anatomical, which means you have to have the tumor. And usually that tumor is one to two centimeters before it can be found. That's your mammogram, that's your ultrasound, that's your self-breast exam, your MRIs, et cetera. The scary mm -hmm. thing is about mammograms is it's radiation, and one mammogram series is usually the equivalent of over 500 chest x-rays of radiation. Now, the oh. side effect of radiation is cancer. So just like a lot of things in medicine, there's a very, very strong hypocrisy is what I see. Now, when it comes to infrared thermography, it actually is reading heat emissions coming off your body. And those heat emissions will help you understand temperatures, uh, heat patterns, but also vascular patterns, and going off a bit when it comes to um, pregnancy and nursing, that will also help us with those types of things. So I'm just going to show you a quick picture. So infrared thermography, if you can see that, it's showing, um, you're actually seeing the whole breast, and those patterns help us follow the physiology of the health in your breast. We could be determining hormones, you know, if you have a hormone imbalance, cystic, fibrocystic breast, dense breast tissue, um, a lot of different things. But the most important is we actually get the beginning stages of cancer before it becomes full blown. Wow. So you're saying that um, for kind of traditional medicine, they have to wait until it's one to two centimeters before it's detectable through their means. How tiny can thermography pick up? But well, we're catching it up more at the physiological cellular level. Wow. So what will happen is, is the average breast cancer, okay, mm -hmm. the average breast cancer is a 15-year disease. So mm -hmm. medicine, their anatomical uh, diagnostic processes actually pick it up right around anywhere from, you know, six, seven years into the disease process. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm catching is on, with infrared thermography is my goal is to catch before that cancer actually moves into anything else, mm -hmm. um, like at the cellular level. 
So when I see unhealthy breast tissue, any of those scenarios can morph into breast cancer. So if I had something early enough and say, okay, your breast tissue is not as healthy, healthy as it should be, these are things we can do to help you. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't morph into the cancer that would be following down the road. So we can catch it literally that early and we can actually catch all the precursors that can morph into breast, breast cancer, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It, the, what doesn't make sense is why they're still doing mammograms. Uh, a lot of money. <laughs> I yeah. call it the medical yeah. money machine. Yeah, so no, it makes sense. The medical money machine is, it's the medical money machine. I'm a little envious because true health care, we don't yeah. have the medical money machine back. <laughs> oh, it makes no sense to me, um, but it, yet I get it. Um, okay. Well, I had no idea. As you can see, folks, I, I learn when I do these things. So I have had the benefit of no mammogram in my life and had two thermographic scans. Um, which is great um, because you know how they say like you have to be see something like I think it's seven times before you actually buy something. Um, I'd heard about thermography for a bunch um, uh, just from random places, funny enough. And so hopefully this serves as one of those spots where someone else hears about it and can make um, decisions for their, their own breast health. Um, I even got my mom ripped into it too because she had had mammograms and, uh, Always, all I knew about it, I didn't even know it was radiation. All I knew was that it, it was an unpleasant experience um, you from, from her telling me. Just yeah. when you're looking at that, I know oncologists that did not know mammograms were radiation. Really? Not That's even, terrifying. Not the general populace. We actually have professionals where their specialty is breast cancer, not knowing that mammograms are radiation. And when you were saying about your mom, when it comes to how uncomfortable it is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's 67 pounds of pressure smashing that e. breast tissue. And one, that breast tissue is getting irradiated, which causes cancer. Two, breast injury can morph into breast cancer because you get scar tissue, yeah. etc. Three, breast tissue is actually very important hormonal tissue, as you would understand being a mom and having children and nursing, right? Well, that injury is also causing more, inj- uh, you know, more hormone imbalance. So you have multiple causes that will happen. One mammogram, but even ultrasound. A lot of pressure on that. By the way, mammograms, ultrasounds, they actually, you can have a tumor growing inside your breast and the body's... Um, So I'm going to backtrack just a bit because cancer is something the average person doesn't understand the physiology of it. Cancer is inside your body since you were born. Cancer just means an abnormal cell. We tend to, as in medicine, tends to name it according to its location, how how that cellular activity works, but the body's immune system is always there to get rid of those abnormal cells. Mm-hmm. Well, what will happen is, is when the immune system's not working that good or we've had more process into that area where it's hard for the immune system to get those abnormal cells, they proliferate, which means they multiply. Sure. And that's how it will grow and, uh, you know, over the 15 years or so. So what will happen is, is we'll have a tumor and then you do a mammogram, 67 pounds of pressure, it can mm-hmm. pop that tumor. And when it pops it, it spreads all the cells. Cancer. The ultrasound can also pop the tumor. Hmm. Here's what else that people don't, also don't understand. I'm saying like infrared thermography, and I'll give you a little bit more of how it works in a moment. But when you're looking at ultrasounds, mammograms, etc., what they will say is you have a tumor. They still cannot fully diagnose it correctly unless they do a biopsy. Biopsy. Yeah. And when you, when you do a biopsy, you're putting a needle in, you're pulling, you know, uh, some of the tissue out. But in that process, you actually can spread the cancer that way also. So yeah. you'll have, and, and here's a pretty interesting fact is you'll have people with it with a tumor, they don't, they feel a lump in their breast and they don't know if that lump is cancerous or not. They'll do a mammogram, they'll do an ultrasound, then they do the biopsy. It all comes back negative, hallelujah. They say, okay, it's negative. Well, those procedures have just increased your chance of breast cancer from that negative tumor 
mm. right? Which could have been cyst or uh, uh, fibroid by 67%. So those medical Jeez. procedures will morph that benign scenario, that's what we call them precursors, into breast cancer. So oh my gosh. there's a lot of aspects that when it comes to breast health, the general populace, we just don't know. Yeah. And again, kind of like what you were saying with people not knowing mammograms are radiation, you have a medical field that actually doesn't know some of these facts. Um, so it, again, when we're looking at how infrared tomography works, there's a lot of things that I am very, uh, how can I say, I'm gonna use the term admitting up. I'm really, there's a lot of people because infrared tomography is a camera it's digital, it's reading heat emissions. Um, everybody sees them now because you walk into an airport and they're checking your temperatures because of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's checking everybody's temperatures. Well, what happens is, is it, that's 100% benign. Nobody touches you, nobody, you don't have any pressure, no radiation, no nothing. Actually, my cameras that I have uh, are way more benign than your cell phone, you know, because there's nothing. Uh, coming off of off the cameras, so anybody can buy the camera, mm -hmm. and anybody can uh, take those pictures. The problem is, is is it's never about the camera, because people actually do it on their phones now, but it's about the process, the physiological process, and who's reading that. reading it, just like so, a radiologist. Yeah, exactly. So it's about the reader. So I know a lot of people that call themselves thermographers and they're just bought a camera, took a seminar and had to utilize the camera. And then they send it to different people around the nation to read those. Yeah. Most of the time the process is not near as accurate as the process that I've been trained to do. It runs around 70% where I run around much higher, like into the 90s percent because of the process that I do. The other is you don't have, you'll have doctors reading them, but I put that in quotes, meaning those doctors are not diagnosing doctors. So in the state of California, which is where I reside, is we have to make sure that diagnosing doctor who legally in the state of California are allowed to read them is one, either an MD, right, a medical doctor, a DO, your osteopath, or a chiropractor, uh, you know, doctor of chiropractic that we specialize in these fields because we're diagnosing doctors. We read okay. x-rays, we read labs, we read all of that versus the PhDs or whomever out there. Gotcha. So that, that begs the question. Normally I start with kind of um, how you came, uh, uh, found your way along this path. How did you? I know you're a doctor, a chiropractic, but how did you find your way through thermography? And then it sounds like there, there's kind of training that goes, that you went through. Um, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of training. Um, for me, a very close friend of mine, her name is Abed, and uh, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, went mm -hmm. through the medical normal medical route, you know, mammograms, yeah. you know, uh, chemotherapy, mastectomy, radiation. They said she was 100% fine. I said, okay, great. They continued doing mammograms on the other breast. Mm -hmm. Three years later, they found stage four breast cancer in the other breast. They went through the same process. Um, during this time, I, of course, so my previous way before, as you know, before I became a chiropractor, I was in medicine. Then I'd left medicine when I started realizing uh, what I call the game, the medical money machine. And then, you know, became into what I call true healthcare. And so my friends, I, I would say, you know, I don't know, I hear this thermography thing and I would get thermograms, but I didn't push it. Mm -hmm. And she ended up dying. Um, leaving her daughter of 16 and her son of 12. And I, these are some of the facts that people also don't know. Breast cancer is uh, the number two killer of women. And uh, so to me, that's more of an epidemic or, you know, those types of scenarios where, of course, heart disease is number one. I kind of would like to do research on how mammograms create heart disease because the mammogram is directly mm -hmm. right behind the heart and you've got radiation, but that's some, you know, that I don't sense, know, yeah. need to do that research, but I think it'd be very important. Uh, but here's the biggest thing is 
Breast cancer is the number one killer of women from the ages of 35 to 45. And mm -hmm. we don't know that. And they're telling people to start getting mammograms at 40. Well, you could have already died of breast cancer. Right. That breast cancer in two places metastasized into her brain, lungs, liver, et cetera. She died at 43. Wow. So that's where I was pushed into another field that I really didn't want to. <laughs> All right. I know enough. I know enough. But uh, my personality, if I'm going to do it, I'm doing whatever I'm learning to 100% of my ability. So that's why you have to have very specific training. And it's, I have my diplomat now. So I, I thousands, thousands, therms I've read, over 100,000. So I read wow. many scans to make sure I do my job to the best of my ability. Yeah. In fact, here's a, here's a little funny story. So I had my boobies scanned by Dr. Claire's office and I got a audio report from her, um, customized to my boobies that I totally thought was like a recording, but then I couldn't figure out how she personalized it with my name. And I was like, wow, that was so pro. Like what technology are you using? No, she does every single one, but she's done over a hundred thousand of them, and so she sounds like a like a polished recording. Okay, I cracked me up. Thank you. I'm happy that you said polished and not robotic. Thank no, you. totally polished. <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait a second, she's talking about me, but it's it's perfect. I mean, she didn't screw up once. She didn't she didn't stumble on her words. <laughs> I'm like, how did you do this? Pop my name into some pre recorded? No, no, it was pretty impressive. I mean, I'm still in awe of that, but. At any rate, well, I feel I'm sitting here feeling very fortunate um, for having found thermography and having not um, engaged in, in the mammogram, uh, <clears throat> given the fact that I'm in the zone um, of, of, you know, I guess, highest potential for breast cancer. Um, just one thing that's popping into my mind, I had another life experience that I um, was at a party and I was with one of the top oncologists for breast, women's breast cancer. And I just asked her, I said, hey, what's, what's one thing that I can do to try to prevent breast cancer? And she said, it's easy. And obviously it's not the only thing, but she said, if you shave, shave at night and apply your deodorant in the morning but don't shave and then apply your deodorant. And I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense. It sure does. So, I mean, yes, we all have, you know, uh, personal choices to make when it comes to deodorant um, versus antiperspirant, what have you. The more natural, the better. Um, but we're opening our skin right there by our boobs and then applying some, you know, different degrees of chemicals. So, Oh, you are between the aluminums, the parabens, the yeah. phosphates. It can really affect that whole area. And kind of going back to yeah. that is, so one, I love her solution. My solution could be a bit harder. And that is I'd have women wear their bras as little as possible and no wires, which yeah, I think is really hard. Totally. But we need that lymph flow, and that's what she's talking about. Yeah. But another aspect that uh, since you were bringing that up, and guess what? Poof, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to have this great. So oh, it'll saying, come oh, back to you. Is. There here you go. Is. So when you're looking at mammograms and ultrasounds, they're actually focused on the fleshy part of the breast, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, only 30% of breast cancer is found in the, fit, in the fleshy part of the breast. Oh. So the other 70% of breast cancer is up here and into, we use the term axilla or armpit region. So right. we're actually getting the full picture. Mm -hmm. So right. all from sides, front. So that is where, so another hypocrisy of medicine is they're only getting 30% of the breast cancers. Right. Where we look at everything. Oh, that's really so, interesting. And that oncologist is 100% right. I think, I think that's a brilliant solution. I have a lot of others that would go into it that I definitely can add in when we talk about, you know, pregnant moms and, and nursing and other things because, boy, I can tell you a lot of stuff. Yeah. The first one I have to say is take off the breast. Uh, take off the bra as much as you can. Yeah. No, I, I, I knew that as a teenager, actually. Um, you know, it's best to avoid the underwire 
um, and then you know wearing camisoles more than 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 bras. Um, but you know then life happens, and lo and behold, I've got an underwire, and it's nice and snug, and my Victoria's like, Secret. <laughs> And then I say, okay, good. Only use it certain parts of the day. Take yeah. it off longer. No, it makes sense. You know, the, I mean, just EMF radiation alone and exactly. you've got metal that, you know, conducts and I get it. And you're right. Um, so those are some good takeaways for folks in terms of these are small shifts you can make in your daily life to help prevent becoming a statistic. Um, exactly. But, but really, the, I mean, the, the, the major focus of today is to help prevent becoming a statistic by maybe think, rethinking how you um, get yourself um, measured and monitored in terms of, of, of breast health. And so if there is not, this option that you can detect pre-cancer, that's amazing. It is amazing. And now I'm gonna, what I want to do is just show you sure. the difference. Because a lot of people, when it comes to infrared thermography, we're actually looking at temperatures. Mm -hmm. vascular patterns and again heat patterns so what will happen is is our rooms are always very specifically temperature controlled you can't have any air or, you know any drafts or anything there's a lot of aspects to the procedures yeah but the most important is we actually do the first picture then after we do the first picture or groups of pictures we actually will put your hands in cool water for 60 seconds then we take your hands out, and then we take the second set of pictures. What happens here is the body will go through its own uh, physiological process. So the body has its own innate intelligence. Mm -hmm. That innate intelligence knows its normal blood or vascular patterns. So when we get cold, blood will leave our extremities, and that includes our breasts, and we'll go to our organs to keep our organs warm. Well, when our... Um, when that happens, that's what we call a normal physiological response. Mm -hmm. But if you have cancer growing inside your breast, it actually creates its own blood supply through a process called angiogenesis. That blood supply is not part mm -hmm. of the innate intelligence is normal blood flow. It will actually, so it won't go to the organs, it will actually stay to feed the cancer. So that's one of the physiological responses. So I'm going to see if I can do this. So this is the first picture that we take. Well, you'll see areas that look red that mm -hmm. an MD took this picture. I mean, did this for uh, a, a patient and said, well, you might have cancer here. Mm -hmm. But I went and did the full process. And do you see how she cools off here? Mm -hmm. And you'll see that because there is a physiological change, right? then I know you don't have to worry. It isn't cancer. Right. So it's easier for us to follow the physiology by doing those procedures. Right, and not everyone does those, you're saying? Very few, very, very few. That's scary, jeez. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, in today's society, we've become very lazy. Yeah. This is a benign process, Yeah. you know? So they say, ah! So you come back every few minutes. Eh, keep coming back. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah. But they're not. Yeah, well, it's that scary. <laughs> it's scary. if you. So how often should people get thermal imaging? You know, normally we recommend annually. Mm -hmm. But I might see something to where, you know, your breasts don't look as healthy as I want them to be. I actually mm -hmm. grade them from a TH1, 100% normal, to a TH5. So I actually have a full grading process. Mm -hmm. and say you're in your TH3s. I'm not that worried. It's, you know, on the lower end of abnormal. I'll say, okay, again, recommend such as what that oncologist said, because I'm taking that one. I'm adding that one to my list. So I'll do a whole bunch of different recommendations, and then I'll bring back in six, nine months, whatever, sure. to determine if we had made those physiological changes to get the breast health back. Gotcha. So, and, you know, everybody will ask me, when do you start? I normally start around puberty, so around 12 years old, because again, oh, wow. it's 100% benign. But I can do a newborn because it's just the camera reading heat emissions. There's no side effect to this process. Hmm. That's great. That's not something you often hear. <laughs> There's no side effect. <laughs> true. Isn't that true? Jeez. Um, okay, so you say that there are a lot of. Um, 
clinics, um, some doing things um, differently. Uh, and there's a certification process to become a thermographic technician, um, whether they read it in-house. Would that be a good question for people who watch this, um, hear about thermography and decide that it's something they'd like to try to find out if there's actually someone reading it in-house or sending it out? Or where would they start um, a Google search? Um, do you have well, any recommendations from them? So first of all, uh, you know, you might have a thermographic technician. Mm -hmm. They might call themselves clinical thermographer. You want a clinical thermologist to okay. be the doctor reading it. So again, we're not just the technician doing the process. We're actually the readers. Mm -hmm. So that's what you definitely want. Um, I would make sure the person who's reading it, that their malpractice covers because many PhDs, they don't have malpractice like, um, you know, us diagnostic doctors. And so you want to make sure them it's a malpractice covers. You want to make sure where they're getting, again, you can buy the camera and take classes from mm -hmm. the companies that make the camera. And they teach you the basics, but they're not teaching you the true physiology. They're actually right. teaching you. Uh, so you really want to follow. It seems like taking a Photoshop class. Period. That seems weird. Okay. <laughs> it, that's what I'm saying. That's where it's, there yeah. are, it is a bit scary on how those are being done. So you actually want to make sure. And the other thing is, which I really recommend is that they do, I call it the uh, stress study. You want to mm -hmm. make sure they take double images within a three minute period of time during those therms. They'll actually say, Oh, we'll take the first series. We'll have you come back in three months. Yeah. No, because the physiology changes. Literally, your physiology is changing daily. Daily, yeah. So you want to make sure that I can see that true physiological change yeah. within minutes versus three months, because that's not going to be right. near diagnostic. Okay, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Well, hopefully we can get, um, if you haven't heard about it, now you know a lot about thermography. Um, if you, yeah. I mean, it just, I, I, and here I am, I've, that's all I've had. And I didn't even know how fortunate I was for that to be all I've had. Um, yeah. I just feel very fortunate right now. So I uh, thank you. And next, next time um, we will, and we'll schedule a date. So people please tune in. Um, Dr. Claire is someone who I actually take for granted for anyone who's joining us because we've had her as a guest um, speaker as part of the toolbox series a number of times. Um, previously through chiropractic care. She's an incredibly um, talented family chiropractor who has a fellowship in pediatrics um, and can really take babies, well, take babies from in utero <laughs> in their mommy's bellies um, and then all the way through to, uh, you know, she's had patients who've been with her for as long as she's been practicing. So, um, but she also does the thermography. She's a very busy lady. Um, she has very little time. She actually makes me tired. Not many people make me tired. Um, <laughs> just, just watching their lives happen. <laughs> but she is an energizer bunny who, who puts, um, does just amazing work. So thank you for, thank for this you. session on thermography. And then everyone who's joining us, if you are expecting, if you are breastfeeding, when she mentioned 67 pounds of pressure, which is what a mammogram puts, applies to your breast, I think of my son with teeth who bit down. <laughs> and I can only imagine that that was probably in excess of 67 pounds of pressure. And anyone who's a mom who's breastfed and they try that once, maybe twice, and then you threaten to cut them off and they learn real quick by the Yelp. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, you know, thermography, thermography is a painless option. Um, and We're next time we'll to. focus on breastfeeding uh, mamas and some of the things that you can probably detect, like, and I'm guessing, you know, galactoseals and, you know, all kinds of weird stuff uh, that I've had, personal mastitis, I've had, you know, all that yeah. jazz. So it'd be great to give a focus to the moms. Um, is there anything else that we missed that you'd like to add before we, we sign off, Dr. Claire? I think we have covered a lot for people to absorb, and I really appreciate you giving me the chance to kind of highlight yeah. you know, what, what I call a, uh, an amazing technology that I think every woman, and again, every man, should be utilizing for their help. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank you. I'll, all right, take care. Enjoy Hawaii. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you.